What's up guys, M987 here once again and welcome to another tutorial. Hope you like the new setup. Me personally, I love it. The lighting is a lot better. The background looks much cooler. You know, it's got a lot of depth to it compared to the old one, which was pretty, pretty flat and empty to say the least. Yeah. Anyway, today we're going to be taking a look at how to do some 3D tracking right inside of Buju. Even though I kind of did a similar tutorial to this, specifically with the Iron Man helmet tutorial, which is going to pop up right now. So you can go check that out. But that was kind of different because, you know, it was heavily focused on the uh, helmet part as well. This one, we're going to be focusing on mainly how to do tracking and all the tools that are available to you when it comes to Buju, since that's what I primarily use for all my VFX shots. <laughs> Okay, so before we start off, I just want to mention a few things that you need to look out for whenever you're shooting footage that you know are going to track later on. That way, you're not going to run into any of those, uh, you know, unsolvable problems. Tip number one. Always make sure to have some detail on the surface that you plan on putting stuff on because unlike Mocha, which is a planner tracking software, Bougie on the other hand uses those contrast points to basically recreate the entire scene so then later you can just put stuff on top of that any CGI stuff, any explosions, smokes, any 3D objects or even uh, simple 3D text, what, whatever that may be. Does it look better this way? Or this way? Tip number two! Shutter speed is also one thing to consider whenever you're doing, uh, you know, crazy camera movements in 3D space because the lower your shutter speed, the more blurry your footage is gonna be. All of those details are gonna be lost and Buju is not gonna be able to track that footage. So yeah, keep in mind to always have your shutter speed to at least 100 or higher depending on the speed of your movement or whatever kind of movement you're doing. Tip number three. Okay, so let's say you just shot some footage that you plan on putting some dinosaurs on later, but there's a slight problem. Your shot is out of focus. So the question is, what do you do? Well, you delete that. Okay, so yeah, basically, if you have any out of focus shots, uh, make sure to redo the whole thing. It'll save you a lot of hate. It'll save you a lot of headaches later on in post. One thing I would suggest, though, is to keep your uh, aperture, aperture as low as possible, anywhere from 5.6 to I don't know, 8, 9, or 10. Now you may be wondering why are you saying lower when you're going from 5.6 to 10? Isn't that number going higher? Well, when it comes to aperture, aperture. basically it's inverted. Oh, uh, nailed it. Tip number four. Okay, so for the last tip, if you ever happen to see any reflections on any surfaces or some flares popping in and out of your camera lenses, just, just be aware of those because those can cause your tracks to be kind of like jittery and all over the place and you don't want that. So yeah, I mean flares, you can easily take care of those. A reflective surfaces, big no-no. So just, just find another location. Sim sim easy, simple as that. Okay, so now that you know what you need to look out for. Okay, so now that you know what you need to look out for, let's jump right in and get started. Bam. Okay, so we're gonna start off with After Effects because we need to export our footage as a JPEG sequence since that's what Buju reads. So let's just drag our footage into a new comp. And I've gone ahead and previously set this up so that it saves us some time. And uh, let's select the comp, go up to composition, add to render queue and let's change the output module format to JPEG sequence. Hit OK. Let's set a file destination folder and uh, hit render. <laughs> Moving on to Buju, we're gonna click on import sequence to bring in our footage and I'm already on the folder so we're gonna click on the first frame and click open. Right away this window is gonna pop up. You got all these different options so first off move type. You got free move and nodal pan. Now basically the difference between these two is, is say you have a camera that is moving in 3D space. That means forwards, backwards, left, right, up, down. Uh, you're gonna click on free move. But if your uh, camera is static and is just panning and looking around in different, different areas, you're gonna select nodal pan. But in our case, it's free move. Uh, next up is uh, frame rate, pretty self-explanatory. The footage that we're gonna be using is uh, 25, so we're gonna set that to 25 frames per second. Pretty much anything else you, you don't need to touch, you just click apply 
and close that. Okay, so here we have it. First off, the way I'm zooming in and out, uh, pretty simple, just using the scroll wheel. You got all these different options, but I'm gonna go uh, quickly over the poly masks and what they do and what they uh, are used for. Let's say you got some foreground object uh, objects that you need to not track or any objects that are moving, say some people, they're moving in the shot and you know, they might mess up the track because uh, you know, they're gonna be tracked too and you might have some jittery movement on your 3D objects or whatever you put in later. Let's say, for example, we want to remove this soldier guy. So what do we do? We just click the add poly mask tool and start clicking around till we get these points. And then as we scrub through time, you can go ahead and just move it. So the middle, the middle point is basically to move it, left gizmo or point, whatever you wanna call that, is for scale and the right one is for rotation. So automatically uh, there are gonna be set keyframes. As you go through, you can see it actually follows them. You can go ahead and do this. So if you go to task view, you can go on to masks and just click on the mask and you have all these different frames. So change them or whatever you wanna do, adjust. Okay, so we got toolbox and task view. In the toolbox, you have all these uh, different tools that you can use, but in the task view, uh, everything, every kind of element that you have in your shot is basically gonna be found here. So you got the mask, you got the camera, in which you can double click and you have some uh, an option here where it says range. So if you have a, a zooming footage, zooming in and out, uh, you wanna double click on that and just set it to varying. But in our case, we don't have any zoom in our shot, it's just constant, therefore constant. Close, go back to the toolbox. Let's click on track features and right away you got this window popping up and you could just click start right away but we're gonna be taking a look at the advanced tab as well and you got a few options here uh, what I would suggest touching and messing around with, uh, with is the sensitivity and the feature scale the higher the sensitivity more points are gonna be, are gonna be shown here but th that doesn't necessarily mean that more, the more points you have the better your track is gonna be I would suggest just you know pumping it up to about two, one or two lines more than default. If your shot is, you know, just slightly out of focus, uh, you might wanna check on large because it's actually gonna look for uh, larger pieces of detail instead of just uh, high, small contrast points. In our case, just click on normal and we're gonna click on start. Okay, so once it's done tracking, we're gonna click on camera solve, which is the next step. And it's basically gonna take these 2D points and actually turn them into 3D surfaces or whatever you wanna call them. Okay, so you got a few options here where it says to advance solve refinement, optimize radial distortion parameters and optimize camera path smoothness. If you wanna have that uh, realistic look, don't wanna actually do some uh, smoothing and all that stuff because that might not give you the best track. You might get some smooth keyframes and it, you know, it doesn't really align with the shot. I wouldn't check any of these two but the optimized radial distortion parameters could be a good thing to help you because uh, you say your, your lens is kind of like all wobbly and stuff. Uh, this could help your track a lot. Uh, in our case, let's just leave them both at off and just click start. Okay, so as you saw, the camera solve was done pretty fast. You know, there's not a, a lot of issues going on here with this shot, so Bougie had a pretty easy time dealing with it. I mean, as I mentioned before, if this footage were to be blurry or a lot of objects were moving in and out, there was out of focus or some reflections, optical flares, whatever coming in, you know, the shot would be much harder to solve. But in our case, it's done and it's actually looking pretty good. So right now we could just say we're done, but I wanna take you through some other things that are available with Bougie. So so for example, we got the add test objects. Basically, he's gonna put a, an object in our scene so you can see how it sticks to it. Apply, hit OK, and then we can go scrub through this. And you can see it's actually pretty, pretty great. Next up, you may wanna see this in different views. So say, we're this right now we're in 2D view, which is this one. So we're just gonna see it in 2D view. You know, all it all lines up. And then we can go on 3D view and you can actually see this is where the camera is and all the points around the shot. And now there's some shortcuts to uh, play around with a view here. You can hold down shift and right click to zoom in and out, shift plus a left click or be around the scene. If you go back to 2D view, it's all lining up, but in 3D view, 
It's actually kind of like rotated, like 45 degrees. The way to fix that is basically by either using these tools up here or we can go back to 2D view. So let's take a look at the two point aligner first. Uh, to bring up the window, just click Control G. So uh, this is the scene geometry. Uh, you can either click this one is just or just click on Control G, as I said. And you want to find two points that are basically on the same line. So uh, we can follow this line, which is actually pretty straight. Yeah, pretty safe to uh, pick this point and maybe this point. Add coordinate from hint. So it's going to take those two points. And then you need to click on the type and just, uh, just click on Z axis. So if you go back to the first frame, this is the Z. So it's forwards and backwards. So we're going to set that to Z axis and click on connect to selected. Then we want two points that are left to right. This one and this one. Add coordinate from hint. Set that to the X axis and connect to selected. Now if you go to 3D view, you might not see the uh, results right away. That's because you need to click on update coordinate frame. Click that and there you go. So let's hold down shift left click, just go down to the ground level, you can see they're all flat on the ground. So that's what we pretty much want. Uh, you can see here, it actually recreated the toy soldier, which is pretty cool. So go back to the 3d view pretty much safe to export now. So let's click on export camera. Let's choose our destination folder. And let's just name this track, I'm gonna save it on desktop, hit save. And then we got the export type, you want to set that to After Effects, or if you want to export this for 3d Studio Max, for example, click on there, but or in our case, we're gonna click on After Effects. One thing I did forget to mention is the flagged tracks. So uh, basically, when we put this back in After Effects, all these points are gonna be nulls in After Effects. So if we export all of these nulls, you know, After Effects is gonna slow down pretty heavily. So what we're gonna do, click on a few points here, flag these points so that only flagged points are gonna be exported. Click on the selected point here, which is green, and right click, flag for export. Go back to the export camera. Uh, let's actually resave it, choose After Effects Maya, export flag tracks only and the scale scene by let's just set that to 500. So the nulls are actually going to be scaled up and then uh, hit save. Moving back to After Effects, we're going to bring in our track data, which is this one right here. And we're going to click import. And right away, you can see uh, some solids come in. Those uh, those are the null objects and the track uh, composition, which is automatically created for you. And you scrub through, you can see the nulls. They're still kind of small. So you just select bottom null there. Hold down shift, select the top null, and uh, that'll select all the nulls for you. And then you hit S and just scale them up so you can see them better. Now, you can either bring back the footage from here to this folder to this composition rather, or you can just uh, copy all of these nulls, control C, go back here, control V, and you can scrub through, let's right click text, let's type in whatever test text, I'll make him white. And let's turn the hit F4 to toggle between the options here. And let's change the text to a 3d layer, you can see it's off screen now and without needing to manually adjust it, we're just gonna click this null hit P, copy the position, paste it on the text, control V, instantly gonna be popping up in that place and hit scale, scale up the text. We can scrub through, it looks pretty good, but we're gonna hit zero on the keyboard and let that RAM preview. It actually looks pretty good. It sticks to the, to the shot, no jittery movement. We could even add some motion blur, just slight motion blur to the text, turn that on. Of course, you can go ahead and put in whatever you may want to put in. In, uh, in this case, I just wanted to demonstrate how you can use Buju most effectively. So, you know, from now on, if you shoot your footage correctly, you're not gonna have problems when it comes to tracking with Buju or any other software that may be out there or you may be uh, familiar with. So yeah, just keep that in mind and uh, your life will be much easier. All right, guys, that was it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching and being patient all the way through. If you happen to have any tutorial suggestions, make sure to leave a comment down below or you can hit me up on my social media accounts, which are going to pop up right now. And yeah, that was pretty much it. Thank you once again and I'll see you next time. Peace.